Hey there folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to the show. How's it going? Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite episode is so far this year. So many good recipes to choose from. And today's episode is no exception. We are gonna be making a knockout of a sausage, the German Pfefferbeise, a sausage whose name literally translates to pepper bites. I'm already in love with this sausage. It's like a snack stick, but better. Let me show you how to make it. Let's start off by talking about the meat that we're going to use for this pepper sausage. This is a 100% pork sausage, and notice it's all trimmed up and ready to go. We're going to be using a 75% lean to a 25% fat ratio. The fat is back fat in this case, and I need to chill it before we grind it. So we're going to pop that into the freezer for about 45 minutes till the temperature gets below 34 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as spices go, we're going to start off with salt. We're also going to add a little Instacure number one because this is a smoked, fermented, and dried sausage. Let's now add the peppers. We're going in with white pepper. That's a 30 to 60 mesh. Next, we've got table grind pepper, 18 to 28 mesh, and then some coarsely ground pepper at 12 to 14 mesh. Now, if you only have one type of black pepper, just combine the totals of all the black pepper used and use the one you have totally fine. We're also adding paprika, a little mace, a little garlic powder, and then dextrose. Dextrose. dextrose is a simple sugar that's going to be feeding our starter culture. And there we go. That's what our spice profile is going to look like. Let's take a look at the casing. For this small diameter sausage, we're going to be using 20, 22 millimeter sheep casing. We got these from the sausage maker grade A casings. And all we've done is put them in a little water after we've rinsed and flushed them out. I've added a little baking soda to the water to keep them nice and slippery, and we've kept them in the refrigerator. We'll use those in a minute. Like I said earlier, this is a fermented sausage, and I'm going to be using a bacterial starter culture that we typically use for salami. This one's called SM194, relatively new starter culture, so I'm experimenting with it right now. And in the near future, we'll do a full-blown review on this culture so that you can get the ins and outs. Now, if you don't have SM194, that's okay. You could use whatever starter culture you have, TSP. X, FLC, Flavor of Italy, all of those work. We're just going to pour the starter culture into the spoon and place that into some distilled water. And that's it. This is going to wake up the starter culture and it's going to allow that bacteria to become active. So by the time we add it to the meat, the bacteria will immediately get to work. They're going to start eating that dextrose and the fermentation process will begin. That's going to go back in the freezer. You'll always want to keep these starter cultures in the freezer. And as far as the prepared starter culture, like you see before me, let it sit on your counter for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, it is ready to use. All right, our meat has been in the freezer and it is partially frozen, definitely under 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and I am very pleased with that. The grind on this sausage is going to be relatively fine. We're going with 4.5 millimeter. You don't want to go too coarse with this sausage. So let's go ahead and get this into our number 12 grinder from the sausage maker. I'll get right back to you. Nice and easy. Such a great little grinder. This delivers a perfect grind. Very pebbly. And I love the particle definition between the fat and the lean. And that's what happens when your meat is partially frozen. It ensures that you don't smear the fat. All right, so let's go ahead and get this into our mixer. However you mix this is fine. Just make sure that your meat, once again, is below 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Absolutely critical temperature control in the grinding and the mixing stage. I'm using a KitchenAid stand mixer with the paddle attachment. We're gonna put it on setting one, and it's time to add our dry spices. That's going in first. Next, we're gonna add our starter culture and give it a little mix. This entire process took about 90 seconds with this particular stand mixer. Only problem is that the max it can do is like four pounds or something like that. Either way, we're going to mix this until the batter gets nice and sticky. If you grab a handful of it, you should be able to turn your hand upside down and it'll stick to the underside of your hand. Just like that. There we go. Beautiful. Let's get this into a sausage stuffer. We're going to be using a dedicated five pound sausage stuffer from the sausage maker. I'm using a half inch stuffing horn. That's perfect for sheep casing. And if you don't already have a dedicated sausage stuffer, check the description box below. This is one of those pieces of equipment that I highly recommend, especially if you're serious about sausage making. And it doesn't have to be huge. This one's really economical, uh, but it will greatly improve the quality of your sausage because it doesn't generate a lot of heat. And that's really what you want when you're stuffing your sausage into your casing. As I'm filling the meat into the hopper, I'm trying to minimize any air pockets. So I'm kind of pounding it down with my fist. 
and that's basically what it's going to look like. So once you get that completely full, in this case, we're only doing a couple pounds, get it onto your base and let's load the casing onto the horn. The easiest way to do this is to lubricate the horn with a little bit of water, open the casing just a bit, and then dip it in the same water that it's been soaking in. That's going to help lubricate it from the inside. Once it's on the horn, it should slide back and forth effortlessly. If you find that the casing is sticking, you might want to re-lubricate it. Let's poke a hole right there at the end for air to escape and get it going. And there we go. Our sausage is now in its casing. I did have just a tiny bit of meat left over in the hopper, and that's what this looks like. And what I'm going to do, because this is a fermented sausage, I am just going to wrap that in some cling film. And when it comes time to test the pH for this fermented sausage, we're just going to test the pH of that little sample. And that way we don't disrupt the meat that's in the casing, potentially introducing any kind of unwanted bacteria. So we're just going to wrap it in some cling film and then set that to the side. Now let's form our links. And for this sausage, I was thinking seven to eight inches, but you can make these whatever size you want. The first link is going to get twisted three times away from me. And the second link will be twisted three times towards me. And you're just going to alternate those two twists until you're done. If you have a sausage pricker like this or a needle, you're going to want to prick your entire sausage, specifically looking for any air pockets. And at this point, the hard work is now behind you. It's now time to let our sausage ferment. Fermentation requires two things to be successful, temperature and humidity. Humidity needs to be at least 90% or higher. And each starter culture has its own temperature range. This particular starter culture, SM194, likes the temperature range between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. My kitchen's a little warm. It's about 75 to 78 Fahrenheit. And so if I leave this on the counter, this is going to ferment beautifully. What we do need to do is wrap the entire thing in cling film. Now, notice we are going to be adding that little sample piece right there. All of that's going to ferment together. We always want to keep those together during fermentation. And that way, when we test the pH, they'll all be roughly about the same. So let's go ahead and wrap it down with cling film. This is going to trap the humidity inside that little area, keeping it relatively high, 90, 95%, which is perfect. And being that the temperature is exactly what it needs to be for fermentation, I'm literally just going to leave this on my counter. But firm Fermenting meat is not particular. As long as you can give it the right temperature and humidity, it'll be fine. Put it in a biltong box. Put it in your oven with the oven off but the light on. Put it in an ice chest with a heating pad. It really doesn't matter. Just remember, temperature and humidity. As long as you can satisfy both requirements, the fermentation will go well. Okay, we've been fermenting for about 12 hours, and I want you to take a look at it. Now, notice I uncoiled it and straightened the links out. During fermentation, the meat has a tendency to firm up, and I wanted these to be little sticks rather than little arcs. And so I uncoiled it, and this is what it looks like. But either way, it should be fine. The fermentation process is relative to the temperature and the amount of sugar that you have. For this starter culture, typically 24 to 36 hours should be sufficient. The first 12 hours of fermentation was on our kitchen counter. The rest of the fermentation is going to happen in my smoker. Now remember, the same rules apply, temperature and humidity. So the first thing I'm going to add is a bowl of water with a paper towel in it. I do want to hang the paper towel over the edge of the bowl of water to allow the water to wick during the smoking process because remember it's still continuing to ferment and so over the next 8 to 12 hours the water in here is going to slowly rise up and then just create a lot of humidity inside that smoker now the temperature of the room that we're smoking is about 78 fahrenheit and we are going to be cold smoking and so this is still very good temperatures for fermentation right you definitely don't want to apply any heat you want to keep everything under 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is what our little setup is going to look like. As far as wood goes, use your favorite wood. I'm using oak and hickory, and we're placing that into our cold smoke generator by smoking its smokers. I'll put a link in the description. The goal here is a nice steady stream of light smoke. So after this gets lit up, I'm going to turn the speed down so that we can get that nice consistent smoke for about 8 to 10 hours, after which we'll test the pH and see if it's done.
It's now time to test the pH of our Fefop Isa. After about 24 hours of fermenting, notice that it's glossy. It's a little firm. It no longer looks like raw meat. We're looking for a pH of anything below 5.3. I'm kind of targeting anywhere between 5.0 and 5.2. And if you want one of these pH meters for free, in tomorrow's episode, we'll be giving one away. Be sure to check the pinned comment for a link to that video. All right, so all you got to do is stick that pH meter in the meat. It gives you a very accurate reading, 5.16. Perfect. That's exactly within the range of what I'm looking for. This meat is properly fermented. It's smoked. It's now ready to begin the drying process. So we're going to go ahead and remove it from the smoker. Now remember, cold smoking the entire time. And we're just going to go ahead and place this into a drying chamber. The drying chamber that I'm using is from the sausage maker. And the reason I need a drying chamber is because I don't live in an area that has, you know, the right temperature and the right humidity. You really need a temperature of about 55 Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius and a humidity of about 80% so that it can dry properly. And this drying chamber can maintain those parameters perfectly. Now, if you happen to have a basement or a cellar where you can achieve that temperature and humidity, you could just hang this sausage in there. It'll be totally fine. All right, these sausages are going to hang out in there and dry for anywhere between one to two weeks. If you let it dry for one week, it's going to produce a slightly softer sausage. If you let it dry for two weeks, it's going to be a little more firm, and the flavor is going to be slightly better developed. The temperature, like I said earlier, should be around 55 Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius, and the humidity should average anywhere between 75 and 80%. I prefer the sausage to be a little on the firm side, so I let it dry for two weeks, and this is what it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful color. They have firmed up quite nicely. Very pleased with the way that they look, and the smoky aromas coming from this chamber are quite frankly intoxicating. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at these sausages and then give them a bite. All right, guys, it's time to try our Pepper Bites sausage, the Fefa Weisse. Check that out. Absolutely gorgeous looking dried sausage, which I am a huge fan of. I'm also a huge fan of pepper, so this should be pretty spectacular. Let's give it a taste. <laughs> Woo! This is scrumptious. I mean, talk about a tasty pepper bite. It's super tender, incredibly fresh tasting and flavorful, and it is certainly pepper forward. Truth be told, I could probably use more pepper, but that's just a personal preference. The way it is right now, absolutely delicious. I'm loving how smoky it is. It's got this very fresh, smoky quality about it. And the sausage itself is on the firm side, but without being dry. So it's got this really great bite to it. I'm loving how creamy the fat is without making the sausage greasy. And the fact that the meat was fermented and dried not only elevated the flavor of the meat, but it also concentrated the flavor of the meat. I let these dry for about two weeks and they are nice and firm, which I really like. If you like a softer, pepper bite, then you might want to let it dry for only one week, give it a taste, and see how you like the texture. If you want it a little more firm, let it dry for a few more days. The choice is yours. Now, there will be a recipe link in the description box below, and I got to tell you right now, after giving this a taste, we only made uh, one kilo, which is a little over two pounds, and we did not make nearly enough. This is absolutely delicious, and I sure do hope you get a chance to make it. If you have any questions on this German Pfefferbeisse, leave me a comment in the comment section below, and if you like this video, give it a great big thumbs up. Don't forget, tomorrow is the drawing for the number 12 Sausage Maker Pro Series Grinder. If you have not yet entered to win that grinder, I'm going to put all the details in the pinned comment. Be sure to enter. It's not too late and I hope you win. If you're new to this channel and you like sausages, click that subscribe button and that notification bell. Don't even hesitate. We got all kinds of sausage recipes on the horizon for you to enjoy. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.